Thank you, God. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So good to have you all in the house of the Lord this morning. So good to see so many new faces. Hallelujah. Don't let them be new anymore. Hallelujah. Please come again and again and again. We're going to worship Almighty God this morning. You've come into the house to give him praise, yeah? We come into his house to acknowledge him as Lord of our lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So stand to your feet this morning. We're going to sing welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to welcome the Holy Spirit in this place, into our hearts, into our minds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we lift up praises unto Almighty God. Hallelujah. Welcome.
being a Christian. That even when we go through troubles and tribulations, we can still be happy, amen? Amen. amen. We can still smile. Hallelujah. That's how we should be, you know. Hallelujah. When we're going through our trials and tribulations, we still have the joy of the Lord because He is our strength. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So happy. Hallelujah. Happy in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus at the center. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you, God. We bless your holy name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Jesus at the center of love. Jesus. Jesus. 
praise God. Father, as we come into your presence, we recognize you as our God, creator of heaven and earth. Thank you this morning for disclosing yourself and making your glory known to us. Thank you for the love and the power of your love that transform our lives. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to know you. There are many learned, many knowledgeable people. They have studied the, the, the nights, the day, the rocks, studied the science. They have known a great deal, yet many do not know that you exist. But we thank you this moment for the unconvinced, the other unchangeable proof that you have given to us, so convincing that we know in our hearts that you exist. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. We magnify you this moment. We lift you up. Even as we come today, yes. Lord, Amen. we want to thank you because you have allowed us to be alive, to know you, to know where we are going, to know that you exist. We bless your holy and your matchless name. We give you praise. Thank you for being with us. We come this moment and we declare your name over every plan of the devil. Yes, every plan, every device. We thank you in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bless you, musicians. Praise Amen. God. Praise Amen. Amen. Let me greet the pastoral team and you, the brethren, and the friends, as I've said before. Greetings to those of you who have joined us on Facebook this morning. We are delighted to have you joining us. Just before I move forward, I want to thank the Lord. Thank you, Sister Dorcas, for your comment and uh, appreciate it. Praise God. Very she. She's on the left hand side. And usually she's on the right. Praise God. You know, some people, every time they come to church, they sit at the same place. Even when they pass on to be with the Lord, they're almost seeing them sitting in the morning. Nobody knows what I'm talking about, but praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to thank those of you yesterday when we were here and we had a powerful service. Yes, amen. It's not the people that were present that made it what it was. It was the presence of God that we amen. felt. Amen. And we re rededicated this building last night, yesterday evening, to God, and we rededicated ourselves to praise Him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm, I've lost my backing track for this song, so I'm going to, what you call it, dub it. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I use any track. Thank you, Jesus. You don't know what I know and what the Lord has done for me. I've been out there in a place of confusion and I've seen the depravity of sin. But equal the truth of God and come to change a one's man's life. I came to the conclusion that the power of God is the only solution for life. I'm gonna say down in South Africa and I'm moving over to Venezuela. Hallelujah. He's gonna say Amen. Somebody say Somebody says, Amen. Amen. Yes, somebody says, Amen. I see the city of Bristol where I came from. I see the lives that were raised by sin. They weren't shot by guns, neither scum. They fell and had 
Oh, glory to God. Walking in freedom through faith. Hallelujah. In Galatians 5, verse 13, Paul wrote, You have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. When you think of freedom and liberty, there are two words that are important to us, each and every one of us. There are in some countries you are not able to even have a Bible. I remember my friend, whilst we were in Germany, he went to Russia. And as a visitor, he could have had his Bible. And when he went to an underground church and they saw him with a whole Bible, some of them cried. They literally cried because they did not realize that somebody could have a whole Bible for themselves. They have leaves that they use and copy and pass around. But I want you to know that God has given us this word. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Shakespeare, it used to be a part of the, the curriculum. Today, it's no longer read as such. The Bible, John Lennon once said, 100 years, he and Voltaire said, the church will be forgotten, the Bible will be forgotten, Jesus will be forgotten. Not many of us know of Voltaire, not many of us, well, some of us may know of John Lennon. Yes, he was uh, one of the leaders in the Beatles. Am I right? Yes. Sir, am I right? Yes. I'm sure you are around, yeah? You heard of them? Come on, give the man a hand because he's the only person who knows what I'm talking about. Amen. But freedom and liberty is something that comes to us through Jesus Christ. Definition is a power of right to act, to speak, to think as one wants. The right to entitlement, the privilege, the prerogative. The state of not being in prison or being enslaved. And the liberty is defined in this way. The state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions. Imposed by authority on one's way of life. One's behavior, one's political views or perspective. It's the power to or scope to act as one pleases. And from a theological perspective, liberty is freedom from the effects and the power of sin, from spiritual servitude or worldly ties. Amen. Now, how can I bring some clarity to what I'm about to say? Most of us will remember Nelson Mandela on Coleman from Zimbabwe. These guys with Mugabe, they spent many years in prison. And uh, one of the things that we've learned that you can be in prison for a crime you've committed or for one you have not committed. And though you're incarcerated, can't get out, freedom is of the mind. Freedom is of the heart. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank God for those two amen. people who are saying amen. To understand this, it's important that we know what we know, what we are free from, in order for us to understand what we are free to and to do. The Bible said, Jesus himself self said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Because if you are imprisoned for the wrong thing, amen. I remember working in prison when this guy who was a inmate, and they asked me if I could go and speak to him. And he, he was a Christian, beautiful singer, massive guitarist. And he told me, his, he said, uh, he was, he always took, he took people from Jamaica to Israel. Because you could get a visa in Israel quicker than you can get it from your own country. And it is, as a result of that, he was able to take a lot of people to Israel. He said a couple of days before he left, he said um, he went to a funeral service. The bishop who was supposed to have conducted the service turned up late. One of the MP in Jamaica came over to him and asked him whether or not he would go up and sing a song. He was a brilliant singer. And he said he went up and he sung the song. He sung another one and the bishop came. 
after he went and back to his seat. And he said, the bishop came, called him, and said, son, come here, come here, sir, come here. He looked around to see if it was him, and the bishop was calling him, and that was him. He apologized to the family for coming late. But he said, I want to apologize for what I'm about to do. He said, I'm going to ask you to roll back the coffin. Move it out of the way, please. And he apologized profusely. Then he said, come here, son. I've got to pray death away from you. And he said, the man prayed and he said, I've asked God to roll back death from him. He said, a couple of days after, he said his business partner got shot, died. He said, the preacher preached, prayed. He said, God built a fence around him to protect him from death. He said, a few days after when he was arrested and brought to prison in England, he, he took the plane load. Some guys asked for their suitcase. And because he was a leader, he got arrested. He said uh, he was in prison. And every time he looked on the fence, he thanked God that God protected him from death. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And he was there and he was able to say to the praises of God. Hallelujah. Because Freedom does not mean that you're imprisoned behind bars and offense. It's in your heart. Yeah. Glory to God. He said on the day of the trial, he said uh, he had to get references. And the, some bishops in Jamaica gave references. And the, son, the barrister was wicked. He said he was good. His mouth was like butter. He said the barrister took the letters and he said, read the letters. He said, these are the letters. He said, here is the man, um, the content of his briefcase. He had a receipt for his 16 millimeter and his whatever gun. He said he, he had to leave them in Jamaica, but he kept the receipt. He said, would the bishops give a man like this a, ref a bad reference? If he is a man who is able to kill people, he has a gun. Look at the guns. He took a picture and he said, what is this? He said, it's a picture of him and Fidel Castro shaking hands. He said, Fidel Castro is a man that supplied Jamaica with all the guns, the terrible guns. He said, from the moment the man started to speak, he knew he was doomed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he said, they gave him so many years. And every day he was in the prison. I was singing or crying or praying to God. And I remember us praying for him and he got an appeal. And the next thing we know, he was released and ended up back in Jamaica. Praise God. You see, believers, God has a way of protecting us. Amen. He gives us freedom. He said, you shall know the truth. That man knew the truth about himself. He knew the truth in spite of the conviction. Because the truth set him free. Come on, somebody. Jesus said, you shall know the truth. And you shall, the truth shall set you free. If freedom is the liberation from bondage, what bondage are we liberated from? Amen. From religion? From sin? The law? Another bondage? Yes. Freedom loosed us from the bondage of sin. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Most of us don't realize the power of Jesus Christ's death and his resurrection over our lives and the power of belief. Amen. I use the illustration this morning. Ladies, I know some of you may have children, some of you may not. But I want to just use the illustration. Praise God. For someone to be delivered from sin, it's a powerful experience. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. It's called a new birth. When a person, hallelujah, glory to God. You're the young lady I used to see in the gym in it, trying to lift up weight. Good to see you. Praise God. It's all right. It's okay. You didn't hear what I said. Nobody heard what I said. Nobody else. I used to see her in the gym. Praise the Lord. Amen. Where was I before I was so rudely interrupted? When a person becomes a Christian, something powerful has to happen to them. Amen. Amen. When a woman is pregnant, praise God. The baby is in the womb. And for three months, four months, after four or five months, you can see the proud mother saying, the baby's sleeping all night. The baby was playing football. Amen. Hallelujah. Four, five, six, seven months, eight months, the baby's happy playing. Sometimes the baby sleep. Praise God. I remember I used to pray over my, 
Oh, glory to God. Some people are complaining from America that they don't like to see the Lord. Praise God. Let me put it away. Praise God. I remember praying over my baby, singing to my baby. I saw a little picture of um, what do you call that thing where they do? Um, yeah, God. yeah, yes. But when the baby was about to come out, eight and a half weeks, eight and a half months, contraction starts. Amen. Violent contraction. Even the baby stopped playing. Because something is about to happen. Yeah. The mother starts to dilate and then, glory to God, they call you, call the ambulance and they ask her about how regular is the, the contraction and you have to give them, but something is happening. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. And for the, when the baby is about to born, glory to God, there's a, something you have to push. And you heard the mother say, they say, push, push. And somehow this baby was so um, excited and being in the womb, had to come out into a world of light. It was in darkness, and somehow the baby is so frightened that the baby don't say a word. And then the doctor slapped the baby, and the baby, ah! glory to God. I saw that I was hearing it. Praise God. Where are you going with that? I'm saying the birth, the baby is about to come into a world. Birth about to take place. When a person is in sin, whether they are a drug dealer, a gambler, or an alcoholic, or a sex pervert, or whatever they are, before they can be delivered, there has to be a power, praise God, that operates on that love. Jesus calls it the new birth. Praise God. I said the new birth. Somebody shout new birth. New birth. Hallelujah. Somebody say new birth. Some people, especially the lady from the gym, she's not saying a word. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to give her, I'm going to say new birth one time to see if she would say. Somebody say new birth. New birth. Amen. You see, the sinner has to go through an experience. Praise God. Something happened that you cannot explain. The psalmist said, None of the righteous ever knew how deep were the waters crossed to rescue that sinner. Praise God. So that that sinner can walk free. That you see that person yesterday was a gambling addict, a thief, and a robber. And all of a sudden, that person is changed. Somebody shall change. Change. Hallelujah. Somebody shall change. 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 The man, John, became a Christian. Before he was a Christian, everybody called him old John. Old John. Old John. And the day he became a Christian, he was walking to church. And somebody said, oh, John. He said, no, I'm not old John anymore. I'm new John. Praise God. New John. Oh, glory to God. I wish if somebody was here in this morning. I was a thief and a robber, a drug dealer before I became a Christian. But you know what happened? The night when I went to church, I told him all the time when that deacon said, son, come here. I want to pray for you. I was at the front and I couldn't move because I was trying to get my guitarist away because we were doing some practice for the BBC and they were coming to record and I couldn't leave because I was trying to get my guitarist. He was a black guy but he never liked black church. He said, number one, they're too loud. Number two, they're too loud. And some of them are always speaking gibberish. So, I was trying, but the man called me, went to the front. If I was at the back, I would have gone. But I remember that man praying. And he prayed, and he prayed. I could not stop gambling. I, could, I was a gambling addict. I could not stop selling drugs. I could not stop stealing. But that night, when that man prayed for me, prayed, it was a violent prayer. He pulled me out of sin. And from that very day, I've never gambled again. I've never robbed a person. I've never stole anything from anyone. And I stopped lying. Amen. You know what? Something that happened to the baby happened to me. Jesus said, little, little demons, you must be born again. Except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God, much less enter into the kingdom of God. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Am I talking to somebody? 
The Bible said we are, oh praise God. What are some of the privileges? Oh praise God. We've been given the privilege to become sons of God. Glory to God. Before I became a Christian, no black girl dated me. If she dated me and I, I said, oh my name is George Beeson. That was my name, but nobody knew my name. Till two days after somebody said, is this the guy you're dating? It's the same guy they call the shark. <laughs> if you don't want, if, if their parents ever find out that they were talking to me, they are dead. <laughs> but you know what? Praise God. When Jesus saved me, yes. hallelujah. Even the very club, the last club I went to was the club in all nation. Every club banned me in Bristol. But the last club I went to was all nation. But I was able to go back to the club and they bet money. So they let me free. And I didn't come to dance. I go to tell people about Jesus. When we oh glory, when the power of God cover our soul, touch our lives, transform our lives, believers were able to walk free. That's what Jesus done for us when we become a Christian. Hallelujah. Some of us, we always want everybody to see us. So we wear the best clothes, the brightest clothes, the sharpest clothes, the, the, all the clothes with disclosure. Because we want somebody to see us. When Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. You don't follow people's prescription. You don't live in people's definition. You are free to walk. Hallelujah. You are free to walk because you are a child of God. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want 
want you to know that God wants us to walk in faith. Amen. He wants us to walk in freedom. Yes. Now freedom is a powerful thing. Praise God. The Apostle Paul used the term freedom. It means that we are delivered from a law. All that we were conscripted to do, we can't, we're not doing it anymore because we are free. Amen. We are free. Somebody say we are free. Amen. I am free. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. I'm free. Amen. I've been set free by the grace of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is good. He has freed us to walk. Amen. Believers, George, when you go out, frees you. Praise God. You're not afraid to tell somebody that you have touched the hands that touch the world. You're walking with a different partner. Praise God. If you couldn't be trusted before, you're trusted now. Because Jesus' power has given you the freedom. Amen. You know, sometimes in the world we confuse slavery with freedom. I was in my backyard in Nottingham, front yard, and I saw my neighbor and his son working in the garden. And the son picked up a big worm and I said, oh gosh. He said, my son wants to be a scientist. And he was encouraging the little boy. So I did a, I was writing a magazine for a church. So I went down to the front line. I said, yo, bless the man. How many children have you got? Some said five, some said seven, some said ten, some said fourteen. And people proud of their Lord Jesus, their ability to produce. So I said, um, how often do you see them kids? Um, not very often, no. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Can somebody hear? Turn up the microphone because they can't hear me. Praise God. I said, oh, man, how often do you see them? I said, do you go to their parent-teacher's meeting? Do you go to their evening class to see what they're doing? Don't get the chance. And I said, boss man, we need to know something here. That having children doesn't mean you're a man. I was writing this article and I wanted to look at how people, different people see things. A man is a man who knows he has his children and look after them. A man is a man who cares about his children. Go to parent teachers meeting. Yes, sir. A man is a man. He has one wife, not six. One mobile phone, not one for Tracy, one for Mason, and one for Lacey. No, sir. I'm... You don't like my preaching. <laughs> I'm picking on her today. <laughs> Praise God. A man is a man who is disciplined. He has opportunities, freedom to do this. But even when he's abroad, he still remains faithful to his wife. Oh, oh, glory to God. Amen. Amen. That's a man. Amen. He knows that he's belonging to somebody. It's more than a ring. It's in his heart. So God said, I don't write my laws on tables of stone anymore. I write it on the table of the heart. That the people who love me, Sally, would love me with all their hearts, with all their soul, with all their might. Wherever they are, they are showing forth their, the glory of God. Amen. They are witnesses of the blessings of the Lord on their lives. Amen. Yes. They are free. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You ever watch a person who lived for God, watch them die? I never forget this brother. I was working in London and he was a Christian. And he told me how his wife passed away. And he said to me, the night before his wife died, his name was Catnut. He said, Catnut, bring me a cup of tea. He went downstairs, got the tea. He said, sit down there, sir. And she drank it. And she said, look in that cupboard. Then I want to look in that cupboard. She told him what the papers were about. And after she finished drinking the tea, she started to pray and speak in tongues. 
and she was gone. You watch a person who don't know Jesus. I don't care how many doves you fly out of the cemetery. You're not prepared for eternity. My God. You're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to deliver us from the curse of the law. Curse the everyone that hangs on the tree. Jesus came and became a curse on the tree. Sin came through heaven. And life came through one person, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came and he walked this world, earth, and he died for our sins. He died for our sins. Praise God. That what the Lord charge us for, praise God, that thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Jesus gave us freedom from that because he paid the penalty of sin. He went to the cross. It was not the sword or the spear or anything like that that killed Jesus Christ. Jesus could not be killed. Amen, somebody. I say it again. Jesus should, could not be killed. A sword could not kill him because he had never sinned. A spear could not kill him. A thorn in his side could not kill him. No, a nail in his hands and feet could not kill him. It was Jesus Christ who laid down his life. He, was, he had no sin and because he had no sin he could not die. He could not die. Jesus could not die. It wasn't until he finished what he came to do. To die for our sins so that we might be free. And he said it is finished. He said Father into thine hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. He said I gave it up and I lay I, I will take it up again. On the resurrection morning Jesus came back because death Somebody pray for me. So when Jesus died, God gave the ultimate sacrifice that you and I may walk in freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Stand with me, please. Glory to God. Praise God. I didn't bother to touch the sermon. Glory to God as I or as I wanted, but God direct me differently. I want to say something here. My fellow man, my fellow citizens of earth, praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. I remember a guy from Afghanistan. When I first started work, when, I, when he came to the prison, I was there a long time. No matter how, I, I would try to talk with him and greet him, salam alaikum, leaving him, I said, inshallah, and talk to him. He wouldn't want to have a prompt conversation with me. And after befriending him and we started talking, I sat with him, talked with him. Don't talk God, don't talk religion. But I just loved him and shared my love that God gave it with him. Let him know that I see him as a fellow man. I said, my, bro my brother, I said, you're a Muslim because of where you were born. Amen. I said, there are Christians in your country. Although they were born in a Muslim country. You're Muslim because of the creed you follow and because, but there are people who have that belief and also given their heart to the Lord. I said, you and I don't need to fight because you're a man and I'm a man. We have a God that created us, a God that loved us, amen. A God who sent his son to die for us. I said, we may not have the same belief, but we can be friends. And he started to come to the chapel and he come, came a few times. One day he said to me, he said, George, he said, I may be, might be the first person to carry back a Bible to Afghanistan. Amen. Praise God. When Jesus saved you, praise God, even in prison, he experienced freedom. Oh. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise Somebody Lord. praise the Lord. Amen. And I want to say to those of you who do not know Lord, the Lord, Somebody may love you, let you down, drop you till you drop flat on your face. And you don't know where to go. You didn't know where to turn. And you're still bruised. You're still bruised from it. But I want you to know, the Bible said, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, 
Praise God. Yes, with all the abuse, the higher experience, and all of that, Jesus liberated me from it. And today I can tell of the love of God. I can walk in freedom. I can walk anywhere because of Jesus' love. Love is powerful. Bow your heads with me. Worship leaders. Will you come to the microphone? Musicians. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My Jesus, I love you. I know that I love you. For thee, all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior of God, if ever I love you, my Jesus is now. Praise God. I thank God that God delivered us from sin. I thank God that God freed us. So what we were slaves to, we can sing, we are no longer a slave. Yes, amen. We are child, children of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We have experienced the power. Hallelujah. I want to share today. Praise God. Because God's love is powerful. Amen. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Jesus came 
Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for somebody. Don't be afraid. I had to get up and take that step of faith. And you may say, what? How come into the heart you can change my life? James Brown and Mary Jane came down the altar to be married. Amen. The preacher said, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? He said, I do. Yeah. Do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? She said, I do. Yeah. And after a few I do's, the preacher doesn't do anything to them. After the vows they made, the preacher said, I declare your man and wife. When I went to the house that night, I prayed a simple prayer, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. In fact, it wasn't, it was a song I know, come into my heart, come into stay, come into prayer, I pray, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I meant every word, I've reached my wit's end, I've reached my tenet, tenet. and believers, I said, Jesus, you come and drive. Yeah. I'll be the passenger. And Jesus started to drive my life. Yeah. I become what I am because of Jesus. Is there somebody here today you need Jesus? Someone here today you need Jesus. You have everything that you have nothing. Your head and you're still on. You enjoy the pleasures of sin and yet you're still sad. Depressed. Sad. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Is there somebody today you would like me to pray with you? Will you come forward? In fact, you just raise your hand right where you are. Glory to God. Is there somebody you need Jesus? God bless you. See that hand. Is there another person? You need Jesus. See that hand. Is there another person? You need Jesus. You've been bruised. You've been battered. Jesus said, come unto me all in the name and I will give you rest. Take my yoke for it's easy. My burden is light. He said, come buy wine without money, without price. Is there another person? You need Jesus. You need Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Those of you who have raised your hands, you want to take another step of faith. You come. What do I have to do to become a Christian? Stop swearing. Stop going. Stop going to the this. Stop going. No, no, no. That's not it. All you need to do is to receive Jesus. He said he came unto his own. John 1, 12, 1 verse 12. He, verse 11. He came unto his own. And his own received it not. But as many, come on, Martin, um, Rahim, put it up for me, please. He came unto his own, John 1, verse 11, and his own received them not. But as many has received them, notice what they've done. They received Jesus as their Lord. As many as received them to them, gave he power to become sons of God. John 6, 37. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, all that the Father give me will come to me. And in that coming, in that coming to me, how will he know why he's cast out? All that the Father is the Holy Spirit that move you to come. Is there another person? Jesus is calling you. There's a call in your life right now, in your heart. Jesus is calling. You're under no obligation. But I'm a preacher and I must preach the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We don't cut. We don't curry favor the word. We preach it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is there another person? You want to come? Amen. Jesus is calling you. It's more than the voice of the preacher. It's ringing with him. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I will live for you. I renounce Satan's power over my life right now. And I hand my life to you right now. Take it. You be the driver. I'll be the passenger. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I will say what you want me to say. And I'll be what you want me to be. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you for such great love. Thank you for loving me. For giving your life for me. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you meant it. Jesus accepted your prayer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Praise God. Bless you. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Where's that baby? Come here. 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 Come here.
word from the prophet this morning. I speak and I wish you peace and God is speaking. Amen. God is spoken. Let the church say. God is spoken. Let the church say. Amen. 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 It's a privilege to be able to stand here, to be able to conduct the dedication for little Messiah, Elijah Milne Lennon. And he's, and you call him Messiah. Yeah, Messiah? That's you, isn't it? I can see. You're well dressed up today, aren't you? Come, come, come. Let's show everybody. These are all, all here. All these people are here for you today. Do you know that? Okay, I need you to come and sit by mummy and daddy, okay? Just for now, and then you can come back later. You look so dapper. Oh, I wish you could come up and stand by me to show everybody what you look like. Look at you. Can daddy bring you? Come, Messiah, come. Let daddy, let daddy come with you. Come. Look at those little clocks. So you get those clocks, there, daddy? Woo, look at these. Look at all those people who brought to church today. Wow. Lovely. Okay. I'm going to ask the parents just to come forward. Mum, if you could come forward as well, please. Amen, amen. It's a pleasure to be able to do your dedication. Mummy and Daddy thought it would be good to come here today. And I know they've been wanting to do this for a long time, but the pandemic has restricted it. Uh, but they're now able to come into the house of the Lord to bless their son. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys, if you could now turn towards me. God bless you. This dedication, some... Uh, churches, denominations like to call it a christening. Um, some churches actually go as far as giving a baptism. But here, at the Church of God, we go by the Bible. And uh, Jesus, he dedicated children. He blessed children. That's what he did. He didn't baptize them, baptize them. Baptism is when you make that decision. You feel in your heart to, to make that decision. Amen. But as a child, the children are blessed by God as their parents feel fit, as their parents bring them to dedicate their child. So the dedication of a child does not impart salvation to the infant. Rather, it is an acknowledgement by the parents that the child is a gift from God. And they want to commit the baby to him. Amen? Amen. Is that why you guys are here? Yeah, he's a gift from God? Amen. I bet he's naughty sometimes, though, isn't he? But you have to remember... He, oh, he's loving. That's good. You've got to remember he's a gift from God. Even when sometimes he doesn't let you sleep at night or he won't go to sleep or he's being naughty. He's a gift from God. And God has a plan for him. Amen. God has a plan for each and every one of us. Amen. Hallelujah. So rather, this service is to acknowledge by the parents that the child is a gift from God. And such a dedication is biblical. For Christ was dedicated himself while as an infant. And during his ministry, children were brought to him for blessings. Uh, Raheem, if you could bring up Luke chapter 2, verse 21, 22 for me, please. So that's Luke chapter 2, verse 21. And it says, and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And 22 says, and when the days of her purification, that was Mary, according to the law of Moses was accomplished, they brought him, Jesus the baby, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Amen. And could you skip forward to verse 40 for me, please? And it then goes on to say, in verse 40, and the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. Amen. So the family is a divine institution created by our Heavenly Father, and children are gifts from God to parents for care, protection, and training. Parents have a solemn obligation both to God and to their children 
to nurture and train their children in the things of God. So you guys thought it was all about Messiah today, but actually it's also about you guys too. So by bringing him here, you are committing that you have um, dedicated yourselves to not only grow him up and to feed him and to clothe him and to care for him, but also that you're going to train him up, as the Bible says, in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So you've got to make sure that, you know, you are also doing the things of God as well. Do you want doing what the Bible says? Amen? I can see you smiling. <laughs> oh, Everton. You have to make sure that you are living a life that Messiah will see. Because he's going to follow whatever you do. Yeah, he is. That's how it works. And the same for you as well, G. That he's going to listen to you. You know, and he's going to watch the words that you say. And he's going to pick up those words as well. Yeah, so, so it's really important that you guys live a life that's pleasing to God. So that Messiah can also pick up that as well. Amen. So, at this point, I'm going to ask the godparents to come forward. So, the godparents in the house, if you can step forward for us, please. Amen. You're going to come up here now. You can come up here if you want. It's your day. <laughs> Amen. Oh, lovely. Okay, so you've got two godfathers and you've got two godmothers, yeah? Two godmothers. Lovely. So we've got Jack Turner. She's out, sir. Mark Phillips. Nice to meet you, sir. Tracy Phillips. Nice to meet you. And Jade. And Jezimobi. I love it. Jade and Jezimobi. So these are your godparents, Messiah. Okay? So I'm going to ask you guys to commit today, and as I've said to the parents, it's very important as godparents as well, that you're not only just there on birthdays and Christmas to give the presents, but you're there to support the parents uh, in the training up in a godly way, yeah, in a godly way, so maybe to give encouragement at times, um, to, to, you know, give gifts that may be a, a godly resource. For Messiah. That's what's all about your godparents. Yeah, don't forget the word God. God parents. Amen. Amen. So for as much as this child is now presented by you for Christian dedication, it is your duty as godparents and parents to provide a Christian home and a godly environment to him. And see that he is taught early the principles of the holy faith. That he shall be trained to give reverent attendance to public and private worship of God and the teaching of the holy scriptures in that in every way by precept and example you should lead him into the love of God and the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? I'm going to say this again just so that you understand. So it is your duty to provide a Christian home and a godly environment to, to him. And see that he is taught early the principles of holy faith and that he is trained to give reverent attendance to public and private worship. So when you guys are praying, you pray, yeah? Yeah? Okay. So I'm, I'm saying that you'll pray. I'm speaking into the atmosphere. You are going to pray. If you haven't prayed before, you're going to start to pray. And then, and Messiah's going to be praying with you. Yeah, he's going to be there. So when you guys go to bed and you're praying, it's really important that he hears you. Yeah, I, can, I always remember my mum's prayers. Do we remember our parents' prayers? Yeah, yeah. We would, and sometimes we used to bring tears to my eyes, you know, when I used to hear my mum pray in the other room. So it's so important that you pray with him. So important that you teach him the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, that's what Jesus taught us. So important that you pass that on to him as well. So when he goes to bed at night time, let him read it to him, say it with him, and let him follow you. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, yeah? And, uh, train him as he goes along he will then be able to to speak it for himself 
This is where you guys stand coming. So also, you shall be trained in reverence to attend public and private worship of God. So you guys attend church? No. Mm. So this is where you have to now start to think, God parents, you're gonna have to do your bits as well. So you have to be able to be able to maybe take him sometimes or to, to, to be with him in private worship and teach him the holy scriptures. Maybe buy him that, that children's Bible, yeah? Or um, something like that. And uh, we have a Sunday school here. Um, our Sunday school superintendents are here. Uh, Sister Bev, Sister Marcia at the back there, give us a wave. They're the ones that, that head up our Sunday school. It starts at 10 o'clock on a Sunday. So it'll be great to see Messiah come to Sunday school so that he can learn more about the teachings of God and the Holy Scriptures. Amen. Amen. Okay, church, I'm going to ask you to stand. Messiah, are you sure you don't want to come up here? You want to come up here with me? You want to come up here with mommy and daddy? Yeah? Okay, mommy and daddy. <laughs> Starts here, come up here. That's it. That's it. Okay, right, so you have all these witnesses here today who are standing here to also confirm and commit to the training of young Messiah, yeah? You guys have a part to play as well, every single, single one of you that are here today. When we see Jean and Everton, we, we need to be stopping them in the streets in Gloucester, Gloucester the small time. We can stop them and ask them, how's Messiah doing? Yeah? And, uh, you know, if we see maybe Messiah as he grows up, we see him on the street, we might need to give him one five pounds sometimes. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, yeah. No man is an island, isn't it? We're all a family. Amen. Amen. So we can all help, help him. So in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses, do you solemnly promise to bring up this child, parents and godparents, in the fear of the Lord? And all you need to say now is, I do. Do you promise to endeavor to lead him early to accept Christ as his personal savior and Lord? Do you rededicate your home, parents and godparents, to the Lord as a place of Christian environment in which the spiritual nature of your child may grow and mature? You've got to think about this, don't you? Okay, congregation. Do you, members of this church, Receive this child in the name of the Lord Jesus and promise to be father, mother, brother, sister, and friend to him. We do. We do. We do. Amen. Amen. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I'm going to ask the scientists to come forward as I dedicate him to our God and to his holy service. I'm going to pray for you, okay? Oh, I like dinosaurs too. You like dinosaurs? No, why you got a dinosaur then? I'm sure you love dinosaurs. Okay, we're going to pray for Messiah. Bishop, I'm going to ask you to come forward and we're going to, we're going to just lay hands on Messiah and pray for him. We're going to just pray. Pray for this family. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, as we come before you right now, Lord, you are God and you are good. Lord, you are righteous and you are kind. Lord, you are loving. Hallelujah. There is no other God but you. 
Lord, sometimes men with they, they, and women, they, they create idols. We make our homes, our, our their people, relationships, things, idols. But God, right now, we denounce them in the name of Jesus. We put you first and foremost, God. Lord, because here is your son, Messiah. And Lord, we pray, God, that as he grows, that Lord, that you will grow him up in the fear and admonition of you, God. That Lord, that the word tells us to train up a child in the way that he should grow. And that when he is old, he will not depart from it. So Lord, remember, oh God, his parents, Gene and Everton, as they come, Lord, oh God, to bring him, oh God, to you. It's not about the, the, the christening service. It's not about the dedication. It's not about the food and the drink. Oh God, and the music later. But Lord, right now it's about your son, you created Messiah. Oh God, oh Lord, he will grow, oh God, to know you. Grow, oh God, to love you. Oh God, to draw close to you. Oh God, I pray, Lord, that you will cover him, oh God, from the wiles of the enemy. Oh God, that you will keep him from all accident, evil, and danger. Oh God, as he grows, Lord, oh God, that you will be with him in the classroom, oh God. Be with him, oh God, that he will learn, oh God. That you will give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Oh God, that he will grow, Lord. Oh God, closer to you, Jesus. Oh Lord, thy Father, that is his teachers, oh God. And all those that, oh God, be brought into his life to look after him. I pray that love will abound. I pray favor upon this child right now, God. The Lord, he will grow, oh God. Oh Lord, with favor, oh God. He will grow, oh Lord, covered under the blood. Oh God, protect him, oh God. Where your treasure is, the way is where your heart is. And 
you know, God wants us to give him something. He doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our finances. He says, bring it into the store basket. So this, his ministry, his word will, will go out there. And we can use the money to his kingdom, for his kingdom, for his glory. So as we give, remember where our heart is. We're giving unto the Lord. Okay, so as you come up, you can put them in, in the baskets. God is good. He's beautiful. He's wonderful. He is powerful. So we're going to give on to the glory of God and we're going to sing beautiful one. Beautiful one, because that's who Jesus is. He's beautiful. He's wonderful. Hallelujah.
our hands this afternoon. Hallelujah. Father, we just come before you, mighty God, to give you thanks. To give you praise, Father, because you are God and God alone. Father, this morning, this afternoon, as we have come to give a portion back to you, Father, to your work. Lord, I pray that, Father, you will bless the hands that have given. Lord, those that are able to give today for whatever reason, I pray that you will bless them also. Father, you are our provider. You are our source. Father, it is not our job, it is not our wages, it is not our salary, but Lord, every good gift comes from you. And mighty God, we just give back a portion this afternoon to tell you thank you. Thank you, mighty God, for the roofs over our head. Thank you, mighty God, for the food on our table. Thank you, mighty God, for the beds that we sleep in. Thank you, mighty God, for health. Thank you, mighty God, for strength. Thank you, mighty God, for our family. Thank you for our loved ones. Thank you for the cars that we drive. Because, Father, it is because of your grace and because of your mercy. And, Father, this afternoon we just come to tell you thank you. Because you are a good, good Father. Bless this offering right now, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sister Annette, just to give the announcements before we leave. And then she's going to give a quick announcement. And then we can go and have a dinner. Okay, you can just take a seat. I won't be long, I promise. Ish. Okay, today um, at 1 30, I believe there'll be the adult Sunday school. Um, if I believe there should be adult Sunday school, which will be on Zoom, okay? Tomorrow, Monday, will be fasting and prayer, 10.30 through to 12, and this will be here in the sanctuary. For those who are able to be here, um, prayer, fasting will be at 10.30 through to 12 noon. In the evening, we'll be having our discipleship classes. We run two, two classes um, at the same time. We have an adult one, and we have also have a youth one as well. The um, the youth the um, it's for the youth is for the parents of the the parents the children of the parents who um, who come and for anyone who can come as well. The reason why I say the the children of the parents, what we don't want is for any adults any parents who would like to come. And they and they can't come because they they've got um, child issues. There is people here that would look after the child. That's why we designed this second class to accommodate the parents, the children, and also any other young person who would like to come as well. Okay. Um, also, there are baptism. We're having special baptism classes for those candidates who feel they would like to be baptized. We will both be having a baptism on the 28th of August this year. And so we'll be running some classes leading up to the baptism on the 28th. So if anyone feel that this is the road that God has taken them down, they want to be baptized, please speak to either Bishop or Minister Tessa and they will be more than happy to go through anything that you need to go through. Equally, the, the discipleship class, we have facilitators here to answer any questions that you may be having. Um, in general, sometimes we just like to have clarification. No question is a silly question. So please feel free to come on a Monday evening from 7 o'clock, 7.30, sorry, through to 9 p.m. And that will be held at the back, and the, the youth one will be held here in the sanctuary. But as I say, for those who would like to be baptized, please speak to either Bishop or Minister Tessa. On Wednesday, we'll be having prayer and Bible study. The doors will open at 7 o'clock for prayer through to 8.30. Next week, Sunday, the men will be in charge, both services. We do have an 8.30 service and also 11 o'clock service, and the men will be in charge for both services. So please come out and support them um, for both services, 8.30 and 11 o'clock. On J 
July the 16th and 17th, the Saturday and Sunday will be our national convention. This will be held at the Bethel Convention Centre and this is in West Bromwich in Birmingham. The early bird registration has been closed because it closed um, on the 30th. However, if you still would like to go, you can still register. You do have to go online and register through Eventbrite. Although, I believe um, for those going on the send, I think you might be, you know, sometimes we don't decide until the day. You can still go and register on the day. Also, there is, um, there is, we're hoping to have transportation. It all depends on numbers, both the Saturday and the Sunday. If you would like to go to the convention, can you please give either Sister Selena your names or myself for those who wish to go on the van on the Saturday and the Sunday. Okay, we've got a couple of community announcements to make. Um, Better Together Community Sports and Fun Day. This will be, you know, the children will be on um, school holidays now, coming July. And what they're trying to do is have things in the community for the children to be a part of. And the Better T Together team, they work inside the, um, the police, and it is also a community initiative as well. And so they are putting on a sports and fun day, and this will be on Thursday the 28th of July from 2 p.m. through to 7 p.m. And this will be at the Ribston Hall School on Stroud Road here in Gloucester. So if you want something for your child to do, let them go. They've got a lot of um, activities, football, netball, um, basketball, all the balls, all the ones that I can't quite remember at the moment, but I know there's a lot of activities that will be taking place on Thursday the 28th from 2 o'clock to 7 p.m. and this will be at the Ribston Hall High School on Stroud Road. Also on Saturday the 30th, as we know this year is Jamaica's 60th anniversary of independence. They are reignited and there, so there will be a service of praise and thanksgiving and this will be on Saturday the 30th of July at Gloucester Cathedral starting at 7pm. So again, it's for anyone who would wish to go open invitation to the community Saturday the 30th of July, service of praise and thanksgiving for Jamaica's 60th anniversary of independence, Gloucester Cathedral at 7pm. And yeah, at 7 p.m. Okay, these are the announcements. Um, I did say I'd try and be short, so um, I am finishing now. Just to um, to say, I did say there was Sunday school online, but there's no Sunday school today for the adult. Okay, birthdays. Would anybody like a birthday today? No? Is there anybody's birthday today? No, you're not yours, Marcia. So, uh, is it your birthday, sir? Okay, we did have um, two birthdays in the week. We had Sister Carol and also Sister Janet. Um, birthday. <laughs> okay, so um, on that note, we will now bring our service to a close. So I'm going to ask you all to stand. And Sister Paula will be coming back to you to finish off. Did you enjoy the service today? I'm sure you enjoyed the service today. I can't even. Did you enjoy the service today? Amen. I enjoyed the service. Even if only about 10 of us enjoyed the service, I enjoyed the service. And it's lovely to see so many beautiful people in the house of the Lord today. So we're, <laughs> you're most welcome. So we're going to just raise our right hand as I pronounce a benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. 
May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Now and until Jesus comes again, we say, Amen. Have a blessed afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hope to see you next week. God bless you all.